A huge weather pattern change will be coming to the United States over the next few days, which will bring the potential for more severe weather later this week, just in time for the 4th of July, including the risk of damaging winds, hail, and maybe even a few tornadoes. On top of that, we are expecting a warm weather pattern to continue with more record-breaking high temperatures on the horizon. So in today's forecast, we are going to break down exactly what you need to know about the weather that will be impacting the United States over the next seven days. And we'll begin with what's happening across the country this morning, and we actually had some big storms yesterday, including one that happened near Springfield, Missouri, that produced damaging winds as high as 80 miles per hour. On top of that, we had a bunch of scattered showers and thunderstorms across the central and southern plains, also back through areas like the Ohio Valley, and we are expecting widespread storm activity again today. Severe weather is not expected to be widespread. It will actually be isolated, but there will be a bunch of storms out there throughout the daytime hours, anywhere from the central and southern plains back into the Ohio Valley and the Midwest, with frequent lightning, damaging winds, and even some large being a possibility and maybe even a brief tornado and this active weather pattern is expected to continue into Tuesday before a brand new weather pattern comes in by the middle of this week. Now let's talk more about the weather pattern that'll be impacting the United States over the next seven to ten days and to look at that we are going to look at our jet stream and mid-level flow. This is what it looks like right about now. We actually have a trough that is currently located over the Midwest. This is helping to bring slightly colder weather to the Midwest for today and tomorrow. On the other hand we are going to continue to see a bunch of showers and thunderstorms to the south and east of this low pressure system so expect the potential for at least isolated severe weather today which we'll talk more about here in just a moment we also have high pressure in place back over in the four corner states and then a low pressure system just off the coast of california and we are anticipating monsoon season to start to ramp up back over in areas like arizona so be ready for that here over the next few days as we get closer to wednesday and thursday we are expecting that low pressure system to slowly make its way to the east which will boost our rain chances back over in the southwest and on top of that we will be watching Watching for a shortwave trough to eject over the Rockies and into the northern and central plains. And I do think we are going to see some severe weather, unfortunately, on the 4th of July. I really do not see there being any big severe weather events between now and Thursday, but I think Friday, Saturday, Sunday could be at least somewhat uh, more significant days of severe weather comparatively to what we'll be seeing for the next few days. So by Friday and Saturday, notice how we start to see these little isobars here drop further down to the south. That also indicates that we are likely going to see some troughing. A little shortwave trough is likely on Friday. Friday to move over the Rockies. This would bring the threat of severe weather, including damaging winds, hail, and maybe a tornado risk as well. And then right behind that, by around Saturday and Sunday, we may see another trough eject over the Rockies and move into the northern plains, where more significant severe weather would be a possibility right around the beginning of next week. And I think this active weather pattern is going to continue as we go throughout the next about week or two. Again, I think really starting Thursday all the way through about next Friday or Saturday, we are going to see a few troughs eject over the northern plains, and that should allow for multiple severe severe weather events to take place across the northern and central plains back into the Ohio Valley and even possibly the northeast. Now let's put this into more simplistic terms with the future radar over the next few days beginning with Monday into Tuesday where we are expecting some more isolated to scattered severe weather to be a possibility from the southern plains including areas like Texas all the way back through the east coast. By the time we go into Wednesday high pressure will be building across the midwest Ohio Valley and back into the southern plains. This will help to keep things drier and also warmer by the middle of this week. On on Thursday and Friday, though, is when we do anticipate another trough to eject over the Rockies, and this should bring at least some isolated severe weather on Thursday to the Dakotas, Montana, and Wyoming, but I think on Friday is when we have the chance for a slightly more significant, maybe a bit more of an organized threat of severe weather, but that's going to come down to wind shear in this area. If we get enough wind shear, we definitely could see a bit more of a tornado threat, but right now, I think damaging winds and hail will be the biggest concerns from the upper Midwest back into the Central Plains on the 4th of July. Could also see some spotty storms back over in areas like Florida and also perhaps as far south as Arkansas and Louisiana on the 4th of July. So definitely stay weather aware. There is a chance that we go live on the 4th of July if we have a severe weather event. I know there's going to be a lot of people doing outdoor activities, so it's definitely something that we need to keep an eye on on Friday. By Saturday, we're expecting storms to continue back over in the Midwest. Severe weather will be a lower threat, though, on Saturday. And then eventually by Sunday, another low-pressure system will attempt to eject over the Rockies, which may bring more severe weather to areas like the Northern Plains and maybe back through the Midwest. And then by next week, we will likely likely see an active weather pattern across the southeast and also across the four corner states where monsoon season will ramp up. We may even see a brief tropical storm form back over near Florida this weekend into early next week. That is something we are keeping an eye on. We'll talk more about that here in a second as the National Hurricane Center actually does have probabilities in place for Florida for a potential tropical storm to form. And then eventually again into next week, we'll continue to see at least some severe weather in the northern plains and the Midwest. I would expect that live streams will be probably pretty frequent, I think, next week. I do think 
think this active weather pattern and stretch will continue with multiple threats of severe weather upcoming. And on top of there being a threat for severe weather and also heavy rainfall that could lead to some problems as we get closer to the 4th of July, it is going to be hot over the next week or two. We are expecting temperatures to be around average most areas east of the Rockies, slightly below or slightly above average, so nothing record-breaking right now. If you're back over in the Pacific Northwest or in the Rockies, though, this is an area that we are dealing with record-breaking temperatures over the next few days. But by Friday and Saturday, there will be a big heat wave across the Northern Plains, the Upper Midwest, and back into Canada as a low-pressure system will steer further to the north, very warm air coming to, out of the south with a high-pressure system still helping to gear those winds from the south to the north and basically transporting tons of moisture and heat. So that'll continue as we get closer to the 4th of July. Definitely expect above average temperatures across the Midwest, Great Lakes, and across the East Coast for the 4th of July. And then eventually by the weekend and into early next week, temperatures will be around or just above average for most of the country. Things will cool down a little bit if you're back over in the Pacific Northwest. So these are the low temperatures that we're expecting Friday across areas in the United States for our 4th of July. Most areas will be in the low to mid 70s for low temperatures from the Midwest back into the Southern Plains. If you're back over in the Pacific Northwest or in the Northeast, low temperatures will be in the 50s and low 60s. But high temperatures, a bit of a different story here. We are expecting most areas in all of the United States pretty much to be either in the 80s or 90s for high temperatures. So this will be a warm one if you're in the Midwest. It'll actually be somewhat near average if you're back over in West Texas, even slightly below average. And then back over in the Northeast, it'll be just above average for most of those areas. And as we just alluded to, the National Hurricane Center does have a low end chance of a tropical storm forming near Florida over the next seven days. This is an area that actually has very warm water temperatures back over in the northeastern Gulf, well above average for this time of the year, which is a reason why we may see a tropical storm form here. If for some reason this is a very stationary storm, if it is to form, we actually could even see a hurricane form. It's just too early to tell what's exactly going to happen. But over the next few days, we are going to be keeping an eye on this. And if there's any major changes, we'll definitely let you know in a forecast format, but definitely something that we are keeping an eye on. Also, Tropical Storm Barry is no longer a tropical storm. It did make landfall in Mexico last night, and it is no longer really any threat, at least to the United States. It really never was, but South Texas did at least receive some rain from this disturbance. Now let's talk more about the severe weather potential for the next few days, beginning with today, which is Monday, and we have a large marginal threat of severe weather from the Texas Panhandle all the way back through Michigan and Pennsylvania. Across the board, the biggest concern will be isolated damaging winds and isolated large hail. Wouldn't rule out a very isolated brief tornado somewhere in the Ohio Valley today, but overall the concern for tornadoes is very low to zero today. Just make sure that you're staying weather aware and have multiple ways to receive warnings. And then as we go into Tuesday, the threat of severe weather will shift further to the east where we have a slight risk of severe weather in place for New Jersey, Pennsylvania, Maryland, also back into Northern Virginia and marginal threat extends from Maine all the way back into South Carolina. Primary hazard for Tuesday will be damaging winds. There may also be some large hail accompanied with a few storms. Not really expecting anything beyond 60 to 70 mile per hour winds or even anything larger than ping pong ball sized tail out of this event wouldn't rule out an isolated tornado but generally speaking anything that happens tornadic wise would be very brief not a huge concern but definitely stay weather aware on tuesday as we are once again expecting scattered to numerous storms across this area so here's the timing for severe weather over the next couple of days beginning with today which we are expecting scattered to numerous storms across the ohio valley today mainly across ohio and western pennsylvania where isolated damaging winds large hail maybe a brief tornado will be possible and then later this evening we're actually expecting a bunch of storms to form back over in missouri all the way back through oklahoma may even see a little clustered area of storms go through areas like st louis tonight with a damaging wind threat wouldn't really expect anything widespread here and most of these storms will be outflow dominant so again tornado threat really minuscule but again a lot of storms are gonna be out there today if you have any outdoor planes at all just definitely make sure that you are staying weather aware have multiple ways to receive warnings if thunder roars go indoors by the overnight hours these storms will continue across the mississippi river valley and will slowly make their way towards Alabama in the early morning hours on Tuesday. And again, no, no severe weather really expected after midnight tonight. It would be a very isolated threat. And as we go into Tuesday, more storms are expected across the Ohio Valley, mainly to the east, though, of the Mississippi River, uh, back over in central east, eastern Kentucky and also back through eastern Tennessee. Damaging winds and isolated hail will be possible. Out of these storms and also lightning, including cloud to ground lightning, will be a possibility again on Tuesday. I do think Wednesday will be much drier here across the Ohio Valley. Back into the southern plains, we're expecting at least some storms to fire off later this afternoon, mainly around 4 to 7 o'clock in southern and central Oklahoma, back into north Texas and also into the Panhandle, where damaging winds and hail will be a possibility. Tornado threat is basically zero in this region, and then on Tuesday, a few more storms will be a possibility from Dallas-Fort Worth all the way back into west Texas. Nothing more than just isolated damaging winds or hail are 
possible on Tuesday. And then here's the timing for the East Coast on Tuesday, right around two o'clock is when a lot of storms will fire off across eastern Kentucky, Tennessee, and also some pop-up storms in Virginia and northern West Virginia. Damaging winds will be the biggest concern out of all these storms. I am expecting multiple different clusters to form, which means the damaging wind threat should be mostly the concern here. Wouldn't rely on an isolated tornado, but I think that threat is very low. Spotty hail is also possible. Nothing larger than really quarter to half dollar sized hail is what I'm expecting on Tuesday. By six o'clock, storms are moving into uh, eastern Maryland, also approaching Delaware. And then by around eight to nine o'clock tomorrow night, most of the storms will be falling apart, but the isolated damaging winds will still be a possibility anywhere from western Massachusetts all the way back over into northern Alabama. And as always, thank you all so much for watching today's forecast. If you are new to the channel, make sure to subscribe down below. I know I said we wouldn't have a video today, but we will not have a video tomorrow. The next video should be on Wednesday, so stay tuned. Click the bell icon so you're notified with the latest updates, and we'll see you all again in the next video.